Today we're going to walk through a very robust and very detailed video tutorial on how to migrate your hosting service from Bluehost over to WP Engine. And the reason I made this video is two reasons. One, I have been recommending Bluehost to everybody. And not that it's not a bad hosting service, but when you're ready to sort of scale up and you want something more dependable, a faster site, uh, something with higher security levels, then you definitely want to go to what's considered the gold standard for WordPress hosting services, and that's WP Engine. WP obviously stands for WordPress, so it does not host your PHP site or your Drupal or Squarespace or anything else. Second reason, um, it can be overwhelming. Hi everyone, I'm Lisa, best-selling co-author of the Snow and Her Seven Seals Romance Trilogy. And on this channel, I talk about writing advice, I talk about books, and I also talk about TV. So if this sounds like you or something you might be interested in, make sure to hit the subscribe button below. I post new videos every Monday. Okay, step one is to sign up for WP Engine. And they have three plans here. Obviously, if you need the custom, you should call them for pricing, but all of these three plans should be good to get you started. You will receive two months free when you prepay for an entire year, which I would strongly recommend because they do give you a full refund if you decide you don't like it within the first 60 days. Now, if you're just transferring, if you only have one website, startup is going to work just fine. If you have two or three, because the next one jumps up to five sites, you can add those. You can still do the startup and then they'll just charge you $20 per domain. So, you know, if I had lisaseifert.com and prettyfabulousdesigns.com, I would only pay $55 and then after that, you know, another 20, etc. Now you'll notice the pricing for this is very different than Bluehost, which starts at $2.95 per month. But keep in mind, you will have to pay, I think on Bluehost right now, I have 21 different active websites and I pay about $21.75 per month, but that's because I needed more bandwidth and space, but it still is much less expensive than over here. In fact, I could probably stick a hundred websites on here. They don't charge you per domain over on uh, Bluehost. It just looks confusing because they say free domain. That means they're going to allow you to purchase a domain such as, you know, mynewdomain.com and they were going to cover the cost of that for you. So don't get confused by that. And don't worry about automatic WordPress installs or free SSL certificates because you do get free SSL over here with WP Engine and you will have, WordPress will be automatically installed because WP Engine only does WordPress. So you don't have to worry about trying to install it. Whereas over here you could use Drupal or PHP or uh, something else. Now, what I chose was the growth plan because I'm going to bring a few of my sites and just, I think just one of my clients wants to come over at the higher price point. So that's the one I chose. So when you go over here, you're going to go ahead and say, get started. You're going to switch over to the annual so you can save more money and we'll hide this little person. And so that is going to give you two months free. You just put, you know, if you have any additional sites, like I said before, you could put them here. So that's seven and you'll see, it's just gonna charge you um, a little bit more for those extra sites. Now I did not purchase any of these extra options and you know, you can always add them in later, especially because I don't need to do geotagging but if that's something you want or want to look into, you can do that. Now, if you're wondering what a multi-site is, this multiple WordPress site, if you don't know what it is, I can pretty much guarantee you don't need it, but basically it's saying it's going to give you multiple installs. The only situation in which you might need this is let's say you have subdomains, like you have members.lisaseifert.com, I have shop.lisaseifert.com, and I don't want to have to do multiple installs. Instead, I just want, if I make a change to one, I want it to be uh, consistent throughout all of those sites, then I might do multi-site so I don't have to go into each site and make those changes. It'll just do it once and save that for me. Um, so the rest of this you, I'm sure you can figure out. So do all of this, make sure you say agree, and then create my site and you're done. Step two is to go into WP Engine and click over here on sites. It'll probably default you into home, but you need to create a site. Now, if you had said create a site before and you only have one, it's probably already showing up in here wherever you had chosen it. But if you didn't, um, or you're going to add another one, you can just click add site over here on the right. And we are going to add programs 
Lisa London Books. And we are going to leave it ungrouped only because I only have five sites, so I don't need to, uh, I don't need a lot of organization. And transferable, you can ignore this unless you're a developer. So if I was creating this site for a client and it was going to go to, um, I wanted them to take care of their own billing and their credit card information, but I was going to be the developer admin in charge of the site here on the WP Engine site, then I would say transferable, but that doesn't apply. So you'll click add site. It's really just that easy. And now this is where it gets confusing because you need to name the environment. Now you have three different environments because WP Engine is just that awesome. You have production, staging, and development. Now, for most of us, we probably just are going to work in either um, production or staging. So I, if you're not too uh, familiar with these, just ignore them for right now. Just create production, which means this is what's going to be live and this is what people are going to see. Now the reason it says WPEngine.com is just this, this is just how they are set up in the back end and you are going to repoint the, whatever you write here, to your regular domain. So don't worry, your website will not say WPEngine.com. So we're going to go ahead and say programs, Lisa London. Oh, I've run out of characters. So programs London, there we go. Uh, we are going to go ahead and say create environment because you only get three to 14 characters. And obviously if I wrote just programs, I'm sure it's already taken by somebody else. Um, so now we get a little notice saying your environment is being built and will be available shortly. So we'll just wait until we get an email confirming it's done. You're going to get an email that tells you your environment has been created, so we are ready to go. Now, we don't need to log into this site, so we can just ignore that. We're going to go on to step three, which was migrating this site over. So we are going to go ahead and say, get started, because we want help. Now, to migrate your site over is pretty easy. They give you all the information here, and they even have a plugin for you. So we are going to go ahead and download this plugin. Now this is where it gets a little confusing on their website. You are going to log into your old website. Then you are going to enter all of this information inside of there. So again, you're going to log into your other website, programs.lisalondon.books.com, install this plugin, and then enter all of this information in. And when it says generate new SFTP password, you can just hit that once and it will give you a password right there in the spot, or you can have it generate a new one. It does one every, you know, five seconds for you if you want, if you're worried about compromising it. So that's all you need to do. And the plugin, honestly, will just run itself. It will look just like this, where you're going to enter all of that information and then it's going to give you this status update where it's going to tell you how the files, the tables, and all the everything else is migrating. And then just like before, you're going to wait for an email. Depending on how large your website is, it could take two minutes, it could take 20 minutes. I'm not really sure, you'll know better than me. But the next step, let's move on, is to step four. You're going to add those domains on WordPress Engine. So we're back in WordPress Engine, and I'll just go back to the home so you can see where I am. And you're gonna log in, you're gonna to go to sites, and then from there we're going to go and find that new site we just created. So here we have programs Lisa London Books, and we're going to go ahead, I just click that, and we're gonna to go to domains over here on the left, and we are going to add those domains. So over here, I'm going to say add domain, and I'm going to add programs.lisalondonbooks.com, and I'm going to say add, then I'm also going to add another domain, www.programs.lisalondonbooks.com. So these have now been added to my account. Now we're going on to step five, which is over on Bluehost. So over on Bluehost, you're going to have to log into your cPanel. So as you can see, I am logged in as me. And then I'm going to go over to domains and then to zone editor. And then from here, when it says, please select a domain, you're going to select the domain that we are trying to migrate over. Now this might be a little confusing because we are migrating a subdomain, not the main domain. I have already migrated the main domain and I know this because when I look at the app record, I can see the IP address for my new hosting, which is WP Engine. And I know this because over here in WP Engine, when I go to domains, 
I can see under the A record, I can see this IP address. Now, typically the IP address for every single one of your sites is going to be exactly the same. I know that sounds confusing, um, but don't worry, it will still work. And so what we're going to do is we're going to find the two subdomains down here. Now, 50 dot blah, blah, blah is Bluehost. So we're going to change this. We're simply going to hit edit. I'm going to control V, the new one. I'm going to save it. And for the second one, I'm going to do exactly the same, the www, and I'm going to save that. And that's all I need to do because the C name is redirecting up. So in other words, don't worry about C name. The only time you have to worry about C name and plugging in what you see over here, programslondon.wpengine.com, is when you have a very, very brand new domain where you don't where you've never even installed WordPress or anything on it. Um, now you'll notice that I have left my mail servers here with Bluehost because WP Engine does not provide email. And because of that, every all of my email still goes through Bluehost, nothing changes, everything stays the same and it's fine. Um, so that is okay. All right, so next we are going to move on to step six, which is we are going to actually log into this site, this programslondon.wpengine.com. And the way to log into it is from WP Engine. Once you are inside there, you can just go to WordPress admin and that will log you into, you'll see your site. So. If you don't know the password, you can go back to that original email when we did step one, and it will tell you over here, it'll have a link for you to reset that password, and it will give you your username as well. Once you log into your WordPress dashboard, and again, this is the nice thing about WP Engine, you don't actually have to install WordPress, it's already there for you, that's what every single site has. But you're going to go over here to settings and then general, and you can change all of this later, but the only thing we care about right now is the WordPress address and the site address. So you are going to change both of these URLs to simply point to where you want them to go, which is programs.lisalondonbooks. So I'm gonna copy both of these. Now you'll notice this is missing the HTTPS. Don't worry about that. We haven't applied for the SSL certificate, but once we do, we can go back in and update this later. So we're going to go ahead and save changes. And we are now done with step six. If you get this error message, it's not a big deal. Just call into WP Engine and they'll fix it for you on the back end. Now we're on to step seven, which is resetting our primary domains and redirecting the others. So I want programs.lisalondonbooks.com without the www to be my primary. So I'm just going to go over here and just so you know where I'm at, I'm still in the same place I never left. I'm in uh, domains for um, the site I just created. And I'm going to go ahead and say set as primary. So now this is now my primary. So you can, if you hover over it, it'll kind of give you that confirmation. This is the primary domain. And then over here, um, let me copy this first. I am going to go ahead and make add, add a redirect. And I am going to redirect to, oh, it already did for me, save changes. And then same thing over here for the www. I'm gonna add a redirect over to here and save changes. And I think it knows that because they set it as the domain. And that's it for step seven. So now we're gonna move on to step eight, which is ordering our SSL certificates. So we are going to go ahead and say add certificates. And remember these are free, so we'll say get free certificates. There are other things like wild cards. Um, you know, obviously if that is something you need, uh, go ahead. But I've always found that just ordering the free ones works just fine. So we are going to order them for both of these domains. Domains. We're going to agree to the terms and conditions and we're going to go ahead and say request SSL and that's it for step eight. Uh, now over here, or I lied, that's not it for step eight. So the next one is WordPress admin pages. So you're going to redirect those to HTTPS and same thing, allow both HTTPS and HTTP and you're going to say save. And you will get an email again into your inbox once these move from pending to uh, completed. Now, once you've done that, you want to go ahead and run that WordPress plugin a second time. So remember step three, we went over to um, site migration. 
we downloaded this plugin, which we don't have to do because we obviously already have it on the site, but you're going to log back into your site again. Um, maybe generate a new username and password and go ahead and run that migration a second time. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but that's what you're going to do after you have made sure to change your zone editor. Now, if you want to check this to make sure all of this went through, um, you have a couple websites you can check. There are three different sites that I like to check for this last step for the DNS propagation. And the first one is whatsmydns.net. And when I put the URL in and I check the A record, it'll let you check a bunch of different records. I can see that it is now pointing to the IP address for WP Engine. So I see this all across here. Sometimes what you'll see is you'll see two IP addresses and a red X. And that means it's getting a little confused because of the migration and sometimes it's cached somewhere, I don't know, in outer space where it's going to the wrong area. A second place you can check is Leaf DNS, and obviously we just did this, so if I check, I can see that it doesn't show up yet. So that to me kind of like makes me pause, and maybe I'm not going to make any changes on the website, because again, if you make changes to a website that hasn't fully migra migrated, when the migration comes over, you'll, you're going to lose that. Or when the DNS propagates, um, let's say you accidentally save changes to the old IP address and not to the new one, all of your changes will be gone, and yes, that has happened to me. A third way I check is I actually go to the website, and then I check the uh, IP address that's listed at the bottom. So over here, I don't know if you guys can see that, um, I can see that the IP address, oh, it just left, is that 35230, why does it do that? It disappears, uh, two, it doesn't want the mouse to hover over it, but it's over here on the left now, 2306345, and that's the IP address for WP Engine for my particular install. Now the way to see that is I have installed a Chrome extension um, it is, and obviously you have to be on Chrome to see this, and it's called Website IP. So um, that's the URL. If you want to add that extension to Chrome, you'll quit Chrome, restart it, and then every time you go to a website, you'll see that IP address on the bottom. But again, if you hover your mouse, it'll jump over to the opposite side. I think so that it doesn't kind of bother you. So that's pretty much it for migrating your website over. I, again, you know, checking these DNSs, I would give it, they say it can take only four hours, but I would for sure wait an entire 24 hours just to be safe. All right, I hope that was helpful.